Hi everybody, very welcome to Mentor and yet another video podcast. As always, I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. Today on the podcast, guys, we're going to be talking about cosmic radiation. Now, is cosmic radiation dangerous for you as a pilot or cabin crew? Is it dangerous for you as a passenger? What does it actually do? And what about pregnant women? Stay tuned. This video is brought to you together with Skillshare. Now, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of high quality online courses that you can enroll in. The 500 first of you guys who uses the link below here will get two months absolutely for free to check it out. So I recommend that you do just that. Right, so cosmic radiation, what is it? Well, as you can hear from the word, it comes from the cosmos. So it comes from outside of the planet. Uh, cosmic radiation primarily comes from the sun, but also from surrounding galaxies and other stars. And it's constantly bombarding the planet. The planet is being protected, however, by the magnetic um, field that surrounds the whole planet and also by the Earth atmosphere. Uh, the... Um, Magnetic field will come and it will surround the Earth and it will come in towards the poles. Okay, um, that means that some of the radiation that is being diverted by the magnetic field is being led in towards the poles, and you can see that by the beautiful northern lights. But this also means that there are higher radiation or cosmic radiation levels in different parts of the planet. And since the atmosphere is also protecting us from the cosmic radiation, it also means that as you fly higher up in the atmosphere, you'll be subjected to more cosmic radiation. So as you fly higher and closer to the poles, you will get more radiation. And as you get down towards the equator and at slightly lower altitude, you will be exposed less to the radiation. So, the background radiation that all of us that's walking around the Earth is being subjected to is about two and a half millisieverts. If you work in a field that is being exposed to radiation, but it's less than one millisievert per year, then it doesn't need to be monitored. If it's expected to be more than one millisievert per year, so if you're working in a nuclear power plant, for example, or as cabin crew pilots or indeed astronauts, then you have to monitor the amount of, of radiation that you're being exposed to. So in the case of the airline industry, um, as the radiation increases with height up to about 66,000 feet, below 26,000 feet, or if you're flying less than about 200 hours per year, you're expected to not exceed that one millisievert extra. But as you fly higher than that and more hours, then it is more likely that you will come above that. So that means that all airlines out there um, do require to monitor the amount of radiation that the, their flight crew and cabin crew are being exposed to. And the way they do that below 39,000 feet is by using computer models. So the computer models, um, they assess how much radiation that the flight crew and cabin crew is being subjected to based on where they're flying geographically, how high they're flying, how often they're flying, and so on. And the limit that EASA has set up for the European flight crew is six millisieverts. So if you go above six millisieverts per year, then uh, your crew, your roster is going to have to change. You're going to have to fly different routes or fly less. And also, if you're expected to go above six millisieverts, you need to have, you carry actual measuring equipment. So that means that normal aircraft that's flying around does not have any physical measuring equipment inside of the aircraft. It's all being measured by computer models by the airline. And if you're a pilot out there, you can ask your airline for the amount of radiation that you've been exposed to, and they have to give it to you. But what about if you're flying above 39,000 feet? Well, if you're flying in an aircraft that is uh, certified to fly above 39,000 feet, then it has to have physical measuring equipment inside. So Concorde, for example, is a great example of that. Concorde did have measuring equipment, and that's part of the reason why we know that the computer models are so accurate, because during several decades, we actually had an aircraft that was flying and could take in data, and we could compare the computer models to reality. Um, so what about risks then? We've been talking about millisieverts left, right and center. Well, the jury is a little bit out on how cosmic radiation ex is exactly uh, impacting on flight crew. What we do know is that 
Um, cosmic radiation is what's called ionizing radiation. It means that it um, can affect cells and DNA in the human body. So if we are, exp you know, as you are being exposed to radiation on a normal level down on the earth, the human body is, um, is built to repair the damages caused by radiation on a normal level. But as the radiation level increases, well then the damages becomes bigger and bigger and the human body cannot repair everything. And when they repair it, it might actually go wrong and it can mutate into cancer. And that's why radiation can be dangerous. So the scientists have been discussing what kind of level of radiation on a yearly basis could be dangerous and they've kind of settled on around 100 millisieverts per year then you have a definite increase in cancer risk okay so remember that we said that the limit for flight crew was six millisieverts and the scientists are saying above 100 millisieverts then you have a significant increase in risk um, but there has been studies made and i'm actually linking to quite a few of these studies here in the description of the video if you're interested in reading it uh, there was especially one study that I found really interested, which was made on 10,000 male pilots over four decades. Now, those 10,000 pilots were uh, compared to a group of 10,000 normal males that did not fly. And what they found was in the normal test group, um, they found about 455 cases of cancer. And in the pilot test group, they found 466, which means that there was a tiny little increase in cancer risk. But the main, the main thing that they found with this study that was that within those people who did get cancer in the pilot group, uh, there was about a two to three fold increase in skin cancer. So there seems to be there seems to be a higher risk for skin cancer. Now, in this study, they did not control for things like um, lifestyle. So, for example, they did not check if those pilots were flying to sunny beaches and doing a lot of sunbathing, well that could increase the cancer risk as well. Um, they did also find a slight increase in prostate cancer, but that increase was only found in uh, pilots who were flying long haul, not in short haul pilots. And the scientists do think that that could have less to do with cosmic radiation, and more to do with things like changes in the circadian rhythm and possibly sitting down for extended periods of time. So the jury is still a little bit out whether or not it is you know, if there's actually an increase in risk of being a pilot due to cosmic radiation or not, but there's still uh, studies being made. What about pregnant women then? Well, there are rules surrounding how much uh, radiation a fetus can be subjected to. And what is being said is that a fetus cannot be subjected to more than what a normal person working around on the ground should be subjected to. So remember the background radiation was about two and a half millisieverts. And on top of that, you can have an extra one millisievert, which you get from pretty much anything. The background radiation comes from things like um, radon in the air and um, radioactive particles in the Earth's crust and stuff like that. So a fetus should not have an increase of radiation above one millisievert above the norm. So this means basically that once a cabin crew or a flight crew um, finds out that they're pregnant, they are going to be taken offline. Um, they are going to be put on ground duties or put on some kind of leave because uh, we, we need to protect the fetus. And the, there are other things as well, the things like, you know, the fact that it's a stressful job and that it's a very, very dry environment and that you're being subjected to uh, changes in circadian rhythm. That's not good for the fetus either. So generally speaking, once you become pregnant, you are being removed from flight duty. What about as a passenger then? Well. As you can imagine from what I've just said, the risks of increase of cancer risk for you as a passenger if you're um, you know, subjected to cosmic radiation is minuscule, tiny. Okay? The, the person that has been recorded, the passenger has been recorded to fly the absolute most in the world was a North American passenger who recorded 18 million flight miles. That was equivalent to about 32,700 hours in the air, which is three times more than I have right now. Uh, he was estimated to, because of cosmic radiation, have an increase in cancer risk of about half a percentage point. So that means that you have to put that on top of the average risk of cancer, which is about 25%. So he would have 25.5%, while all the other people who didn't fly even close to as much as him had 25%. So it's a tiny little amount. If you want to find out exactly how much, then take the amount of flight miles you have and divide it with 3.7 billion. 
then you have the percentage point that you need in order to figure out how much extra cancer risk you have due to cosmic radiation. Right guys, that's all I had about cosmic radiation. I hope you found it interesting. And before I go, I also want to remind you to check out Skillshare. It's a fantastic learning community thousands of different courses in pretty much any subject that you can think about. If you want to home in on your CV writing skills or if you want to, like me, improve your Spanish skills, then check it out. And if you're using these links, you get two months absolutely for free. So you can check it out and you can tell me afterwards whether or not you liked it. Have an absolutely fantastic day and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.